Well, if they're on a rock around a planet, uh, in a planet like our own, it's good. the physiology is probably going to be a similar constraint. If they've come from something like a gas giant, it's a physiology that you can't even contemplate at the moment. <laughs> you know, it's going to be different. They may be essentially um, formless. I think the first, the first complex large creatures around with jellyfish, apparently, some of the same reason, they actually technically can just live on and on forever. <laughs> so some of them may be around from the dinosaur era. Yeah. They've been untouched. But uh, if you think of that sort of shape and that sort of aphomorphous um, physiology, if you start to get to that point where because of their environment, there's a gas giant and they're, they're floating around in some sort of gas world, um, then the way they would communicate may be off the spectrum. Because I'm only dealing with things that will have um, initially a, a physiology similar to our own um, in the way that they are able to produce and send a signal. It's all an assumption there, if you like, that they, they've got to have some sort of hardware <laughs> that can send out the signal that, such that we can identify it. same frequency yes. so is it something of a natural phenomenon that we're not aware of and we listen to something that we haven't heard before on that side of it or is it literally got something if we were able to get the whole transmission is it got a lot more in there that would tell us that it's some sort of communication or got information in there in some form or other so um, I'm going to keep listening. The new one actually comes from a thousand light years away. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. Um, but it's rotating, it's, it's coming from an area of planet that's rotating much faster than ours. So is that something to do with it or not? Um, but we're, we're starting to find Earth like planets now anyway. From the last one was a few weeks ago. And that's 500 light years away. Kepler 196. Yeah, I, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I can never remember all these. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they'd give them names that you could remember. <laughs> um, but that's 500 light years away. Now, these are all in our own galaxy, I'd say. They're, you know, this is our neighbourhood, if you yeah. like. Um, so this is where we li All the targeted searches have been in our own galaxy, for practical reasons, apart from anything else. But then you've got billions of galaxies out there um, that could be doing similar. Quite often I'll have a radio interview and they start with Star Trek theme music. You know. oh. and, <laughs> uh, which sounds <certainly> great <laughs> uh, because it, it, you perceive it as almost sort of trivialising because it's TV program. I don't think they mean to do it, but yes, you you get the UFO contingent, the people that believe they've been visited by an anthropomorphized type of alien, um, the typical green man in his flying saucer. To be quite honest, to get from another planet, from another star, is so time-consuming 
expensive in any meaning of the word, that it's really unlikely to do it. 